I've had some uh, feedback from uh, some of my um, subscribers and uh, and viewers um, regarding um, camera r raw files, and I've uh, been asked for um, uh, to, to actually make um, um, a video about uh, uh, using the uh, the Adobe uh, Camera Raw plugin. Uh, but actually starting it from first principles and, and looking at it from a, a beginner's perspective. So I'll start off today, I've got my uh, files displayed in, in um, Adobe um, in Adobe Bridge and I've got a raw file here which is um, an RAF um, suffix file which is a raw file from a, a Fuji camera. Uh, this is from the, the Fuji X100S. Uh, if I double click on that, uh, it opens up in um, uh, in the, the Adobe Raw plugin program. Uh, if we just look at the screen for a second, if we look at the um, across the top, we've got a, um, a magnifying glass. If you want to uh, to zoom in to look at any areas of the screen, uh, you've got a hand for moving these about. You've got um, eyedropper. Uh, forgetting your white balance, uh, you got a c an eyedropper for color sampling. Uh, you got uh, an adjustment tool for uh, targeting areas of the screen. You got a crop tool. You got a straightening tool. Uh, you got a perspective control tool, spot removal, eye red eye removal, an adjustment brush, uh, graduated filter. Um, a radial filter where you can highlight uh, part of the uh, the scene and uh, just treat that. Uh, you've got dialogues and then you've got uh, image rotation as well. Down this side you've got the uh, an, a number of um, different headings uh, but I'm going to stick today with the with the colour, the basic colour one, uh, which is the left hand one. And you've got um, a histogram here showing the uh, exposure and uh, colour balance uh, really across the, uh, the spectrum from, from uh, black black to white. Um, the white balance is as, as it was shot in the camera. Uh, you can adjust your colour temperature and tints here if you want. You've got exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, vibrance and saturation, sliders which uh, will adjust adjust the image. Okay now if we start to look at the uh, uh, the individual elements of the, uh, this basic um, section within the uh, Adobe uh, RAW plugin. You see that the first one um, is is exposure. Now you can you can drag this left to reduce your exposure, right to increase your exposure. If you double click on it, on it, it goes back to uh, back to zero. There we go. Um, the overall exposure on this isn't bad so I'm going to leave that as it is for now. So. Um, We'll come back to contrast in a minute, but uh, highlights and, and, and shadows. Now there's quite a range um, between the highlights and shadows on this picture. So first of all, I'm going to reduce the highlights to try and bring out some uh, the detail uh, in the clouds in the sky. So let me take that right back to about there. So uh, and then I'm going to increase the shadows slightly just to bring out the detail in the the corn wheat uh, in the foreground of the photograph. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to uh, to contrast and I'm going to increase that a bit and see what it does. I mean, if you work it right up it perhaps gets a bit too contrasty. But if I put about uh, about 40 points of contrast into that uh, it's now starting to bring out more detail in the picture as well. So. Um, the whites and the blacks, uh, you can adjust at the point at which the um, the whites and blacks uh, um, burn out. Um, and to get a good idea of this, if you press the, the Alt key and then click on the whites, uh, you get a black screen. Now if you adjust this around, you can see they start to come in and out. And you can see the histogram uh, as well moving. So you really want that at a point where it's just about starting to to burn out. And same with the blacks. Press Alt and press the arrow. And again, you can see in the bottom left hand corner the blacks are just starting to appear or disappear. And if I increase them again, you can see. So, 
I'll take that back to a point where the blacks are just starting to show. Um, now this this is a, a scene with a fair bit of detail in it, so we'll uh, we'll look at adjusting the clarity. Uh, I'll bring this up to get more detail into the corn wheat at the uh, at the foreground. Oh, and I'm going to put about 85 points of clarity into that. Now the vibrant slider will increase the the strength of colour in the brighter coloured areas. If I just whack it up, you can see. Uh, you can make it look like a postcard if you want. No, well, 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 I'll bring that back to back to zero, and I'll perhaps just bring a little bit in. Uh, saturation has a similar um, similar effect to to vibrance, but actually works on on all of the colours across the the spectrum. So if I wipe that right up, you can see again it's starting to look like a a postcard. Alternatively, of course, you can take saturation right down and end up with a black and white shot. There are better ways to do that, which I'll show you in an, an, another video. But I'm going to put the saturation uh, back to zero. Now, the last thing on this uh, this picture before I uh, send it to uh, to Photoshop is it's not quite level, is it? Uh, this was taken handheld through a gap in the hedge. Uh, and you can see there's a fairly straight line across the uh, the upper centre part of the of the picture, which it it would lead me to be blue. That might have been an old railway track or something, because it is very level. So now to actually level this up, you can double click uh, on the level icon, and it will attempt to to level it automatically. Um, however, once you've done this, uh, there's no undo on it, so it means starting again if you <laughs> if you don't do it right. So I think I always find that levelling manually is a better idea. So if I click on it once, uh, and if you pick a point on your straight line, if we start there, and left click and drag it across, and if we use the top of that hedge line as a straight line, when I'm happy with it, I let the left mouse key go, and it, it levels it up. Now once uh, I've um, clicked on open image and open the uh, the picture up in um, in Photoshop, you'll actually be able to see the it leveled up. So I'll click open image. That's I'll process the uh, the file now and again it now opens up in um, in Photoshop. A, um, another raw file here. This is um, a, uh, a raw file from a Canon uh, 70D, um, and uh, it's got a CR2 um, suffix to it. Now, you know, th this is a, um, a photograph of um, a ruined church at uh, Annesley in uh, Nottinghamshire. But if I double click on this, I can uh, open it up in. Uh, in the camera raw uh, editor again. Now you see straight away that uh, this photograph here has quite a uh, a lot of dynamic range going from from uh, the very light grey of the um, of the overcast sky, although it's bright, um, through to the almost uh, black shade underneath the trees uh, on the right hand side of the screen. So. Right, again, we'll start off with the exposure, which is probably about right. Contrast, again, I think I'll start and I'll reduce the highlights. And that actually brings some detail into the uh, into the sky. Uh, and, and I'll increase the shadow detail. And lo and behold, we've got some of the tree in as well. A tiny bit of uh, lens flare there. Well, there must have been sun coming over the top somewhere. But um, we'll get rid of that uh, when we get back into Photoshop. Right, again, I'll press Alt and the whites, and press Alt and the blacks. Now I want to keep the detail, so I'll reduce that right down there. So clarity, 
again that I'm, I quite like clarity so it, there's a fair bit of detail in that uh, in that stonework so I'm going to put that to about 70 percent five runs I'll sort of play with that and see what I like about 75 is giving some nice colours in the stone, isn't it? So, uh, and I think I'll leave the, uh, the saturation where it is. Now, th this picture, in terms of whether it's level or not, it, uh, it's a bit all over the place because it was taken with a with a quite a wide angle lens, and it, it is, to my view here, not quite upright rather than being out of level. Well, that, that's probably the same thing. Um, but there isn't anywhere really that, that I can draw a level line across there and actually uh, use a leveling tool within within um, uh, Camera Raw there. So I'm actually going to level that up in, in, in Photoshop um, afterwards uh, by rotating the image and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So, so if I press uh, Open Image, the file will process and uh, open up in, uh, in Photoshop CC. Right, there we go. Right, I'm going to look at uh, uh, trying to get this slightly more upright. It's only very, very slightly out of square, so uh, if I go to image rotation arbitrary, I'm just going to put about half a half a degree clockwise rotation into it. Well, there you go, that looks about right now. So. We've rotated the uh, the frame somewhat here now, so we've got uh, we've got some white bits. Uh, now there are fancy ways to get rid of that, but at the moment I'm just going to uh, to crop the white bits out for the time being. There we go. Well, I'm gonna just going to try and maximise the bit at the top, so I don't lose too much of the point. Fresh as we'll get without any other white bits. So right, that's going to drop that. And there's our, our completed uh, photograph. Um, I hope this has been useful for any beginners who want to uh, want to uh, start uh, processing uh, processing raw files. I mean, th th there is a point to it. I mean, it's quite easy to take a snapshot as a JPEG, but when you look at the raw file, there's a lot more detail and colour information in that file. And from quite a dull picture here, we've been able to pick out, uh, you know, both um, uh, highlights in the overexposed areas in the uh, 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 in the sky, and also um, details uh, in the, within the tree that um, uh, uh, that, were, that were previously hidden because they were in the shadow. Uh, so uh, they, they say there's the ability to bring a lot more uh, information out of the picture. Um, right, the last thing I'm going to do to this actually is to um, get rid of that little bit of a little bit of flare there. So if we use the um, the content aware hey, uh, content aware fill tool, so I'll just go to fill content aware here yeah, and uh, OK, and let's get rid of that now. So and there's our finished photograph. Thank you very much for watching this, and uh, be sure to look out uh, for my next video. Thanks.